Okay, boys and girls, sports fans, Dan here, and I'm with Mr. John Wookie. The last time we met John, you were at another place. Talk I was. You were, and now you're at Salesforce. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? So my focus in coming here was really to try to translate the vision of the social enterprise into how companies actually worked. Mm. So I think Salesforce had done a great job of talking about social. Uh, most of the focus was around what did it mean for how you work with mm. your customers, through the selling process, the service process, through marketing. Uh, as I talked with Mark over the last few years, and we started talking about social, one of the things that was obvious was we need to think about what that means for how we run our companies inside. Mm. And my focus coming here was to really think about that and come up with a strategy for how we could execute on it. So what's the vision? I mean, I heard something of this yesterday, and I'm sat there thinking, this sounds pretty big. Tell me. So, we, so yesterday we launched work.com. Yep. Uh, work.com is uh, a couple things. One is we did start with an acquisition eight months ago of a company called Ripple, mm. which was known for social performance management. Pretty lightweight, though, yeah? Uh, well, you know, I think they had more there than the people probably gave them credit for. You know, one of the things they had done a tremendous amount of work around mm. gamification mm. using some of those principles from a design standpoint. So mm. people saw badges and recognition, and they kind of thought that's what it was about. Mm. Um, what they tended not to see as much of is you could actually create a completely HR compliant performance review and run a calibration loop and process and manage your compensation decisions from that perspective. So, it, Excuse me just there for a minute, John. Does that mean that um, what Ripple had and will develop going forward would put you into the, I guess it's almost traditional now, the talent management space in some sense? Right. So the area we're focused on right now is performance management. Okay. Uh, but it's a different approach entirely in terms of how we do it. But from a category standpoint, so people kind of understand the area mm. we're in, that's the simplest way to think about it. Right. Uh, what we've done that's really different is designed it for people working in operating units. Right. So the traditional approach has always been to think about it from how will HR administer the program. Mm -hmm. And we thought about it more from a standpoint of if you're a sales rep working in the field, closing deals, if you're a service agent, closing calls, if you're in the marketing organization, if you're a developer, mm -hmm. what does it mean to you mm -hmm. in terms of how do you know what you should be focused on? How do we put the right motivation tools in place? And then how do we manage your performance and give you feedback that actually will ensure that you're directed to what not just HR thinks about, but more importantly, what does the business think about? What does that mean, though, for the very best performers? Because the very best performers in, in companies don't really need any help at all. In fact, if anything, they tend to avoid it, don't they? Well, I think uh, if you think about it from a standpoint of uh, good managers and good organizations, mm -hmm. I think they've always tried to do this. Mm -hmm. But if you ask them about their HR systems, they tend to say the HR systems really don't help them do that. They tend to be more what we like to call work on work. Mm. So, you know, you try to have weekly one-on-ones with your teams, you try to give them alignment to what the mission of the company is and the objectives you have for your, for your individual organization. You try to do a good job of mapping that to what people do every single day, but people were doing that largely manually. We've tried to build a system from that requirement first. Um, so when you have a simple tool to recognize people when they do great work, when you have a tool that supports both formal feedback that you want to do as part of a performance review cycle, um, but also informal feedback that can happen across any part of the organization between mm. peers. When we give you a uh, an actual workspace for doing coaching where you can track actions and have a dialogue that becomes part of your continuing growing record. Uh, when you have a social goals framework where people actually explicitly commit to goals and key results and they collaborate on creating them. You create a very different type of system, and then in the end, we can build a performance review fairly easily because we have a tremendous amount of meaningful content. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to follow a semi-annual cycle. It could be monthly. It could be quarterly. It could be whatever really makes sense for the business you're running. Okay. So that's a pretty big vision. What does the roadmap look like in broad strokes? So we're, you know, it's interesting. I think one of the things that, you know, I've been at Salesforce now for about 10 months, and then one of the things I've learned is we, the company is very focused on doing what we do well before we move on too aggressively. Mm. Uh, if you look at, say, the marketing cloud that we launched this year, this at uh, this conference, mm. uh, it's a, that's a huge vision. Mm. We've been hearing for three years we need to go into marketing. Uh, we've done some things like the acquisition of Radian 6, but this was really the time we felt it was right to launch it. 
and you know, I kind of look at the same with work.com. I think we have a great starting point. We think we have a huge uh, market to, to address with this. Um, but there's going to be some logical adjacencies. You know, we've already heard people ask us about learning. We've had people mm. talk about you should do more with this, uh, extending into onboarding programs. Um, there's more we can do with the report rewards program that we announced this, this week with our partnership with Amazon.com. So there's going to be logical places for us to grow, but we're going to spend a lot of time working with our customers, the mm. customers we have like Facebook we talked about and Spotify and Living Social and HubSpot, but also more and more companies in more traditional industries like 1-800-Flowers and Virgin America um, to see how it works in their environments and make sure we've done this really well and then hear from them, you know, what's, you know, what would really help them next? What's mm -hmm. the next thing we should sort of step into? Okay. Does that mean then that, well, I, I, can, I can almost see that you're going to be pulled in a million and one different directions, so it's going to be hard for you to prioritize, or not necessarily hard, but you're going to have to be pretty firm about uh, prioritizing things, I guess. So, I mean, I think one thing that there's, there's uh, I think one difference, one interesting thing about the environment here is, because we focus so much on the sort of platform-based approach and our own customers have done a lot of work on the platform, like the example we showed yesterday with Facebook where they built a force.com app mm, that links sure. our stuff and Workday stuff and gives people a compensation tool. As people build those things, and for instance, we've had a lot of questions from customers about, that looks like a great tool, how do we get that? And we can talk to Facebook about how they did it. I think we're going to find that there's things that come up more frequently that are logical for us to pursue mm -hmm. and, and that we think we'll have a ready market with. And more importantly, the ready market to me indicates that's where people see the most value. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll get a good feedback in terms of where to go next based on what people say. You know, that's great. They might get there someday, but I'm going to build something on my own and, and, and see kind of where those populations pop up. Okay. Last question for you, John. And if, work, if Workday was here, I'd, I'd put the two of you on the spot, but they're not, so you, you get first shot at this. I can, I can pretend to be Stan. You, can, you could indeed <laughs> pretend to be Stan. Um, what's the deal? What's the deal between you guys and, and Workday? So Workday, I mean, Workday's built a great core HR system, a great mm. comp, you know, payroll system. They're now going into financials. They've had it for a while, and I think they're going to be more aggressive pushing there. I think they very much followed the path that made people self successful, but they built a cloud solution, so I think they've thought to where the market's really going. We run them internally. Facebook runs them internally. A lot of our customers run them internally. So I, you know, I'm, we're excited that we announced our partnership this week, where we're actually integrating much more tightly with Workday. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the partnership. Um, they have some areas that overlap with some of the things that we're building, but that's that's increasingly common in the in sure. the world, and we have to be able to work together and know that on some occasions we may compete. Mm -hmm. Um, I think if, you know, where people say we really want a complete end-to-end -end solution that is everything in one place, one package, Workday may be a good answer for them. Our focus, again, is taking more of these applications that are, you know, these people management applications into the places where people work. So we focused on deep integration in sales cloud, service cloud, and so on. For some companies, that may be the right thing to do. You but don't fancy the HR admin space, then? Well, you know, again, I think there's, you know, the question I have is would we add anything you know, special there. Mm. And, and unless I had a stronger answer to that, my sense would be, no, it's better left to folks like Workday who mm. really have the expertise and mm. interest in doing that. Mm. John, thank you very much indeed for your time, sir. Okay. Always Thanks. good to Good to, me. to talk to you Thank guys. you. There you got it, boys and girls.